Hello and welcome to SAS Bootcamp. This is week two, video seven. And in this video, we are going to learn about SAS Date. Before I begin programming, I need to explain a little bit about how SAS Date works and then we'll get right into the program. I need to do this because um, SAS Date is one of those things that I've seen trips up people very easily. It's, it's a little confusing, but once you learn how to use it, you will understand how truly powerful it is. So let's begin first by exploring different variable types within SAS. So far, we've been exposed to two types of variables in SAS, a numeric variable and a character variable, right? The numeric variable is simply a number. It can be an integer, it can be a negative number, it can have decimals, but it's a number. And then we learned about character variables, which is basically, uh, which is basically strings or a string of characters, if you will. Um, SAS date is actually neither numeric nor character. The way SAS stores date variables in the back end of SAS, it has a simple input which is a number like one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. And the way they are done is actually they're anchored to January 1st, 1960. So that SAS date zero is January 1st, 1960. SAS date one is January 2nd, 1960. SAS date three is January 3rd, 1960, and so on and so forth, right? It just keeps incrementing as, a, as, a, as an integer from there. And actually, if you go backwards, SAS date negative one is December 31st, 1959. SAS date negative two is December 30th, 1959, and so on and so forth. Now, you might wonder why January 1st, 1960? And really, there are many number of stories for why that date came about. One explanation is that the programmers of SAS wanted to honor the birth date of uh, this IBM system that they were working on as they were developing SAS. But the reason why they picked 1960, January 1st, doesn't matter. What is important is that they picked the fixed date right so they pick the fixed date and they set all of their sas dates around that date which means that sas date could now be an integer and having that date be an integer value is really useful as you will see in a little bit because that integer date value lets you do all sorts of mathematical operations on that date including subtracting two dates dividing by a different number so on and so forth now that's how sas dates work on the back end on the front end we cannot show to the user that a SAS date is day 30,500, right? I don't know how many days were there between January 1st, 1960 and today, because I can't do that kind of math in my head. So what SAS does for you is it takes that integer date value that's on the back end and it translates it into a language that's readable for us, right? And those translations are simply formats. There are several formats that SAS uses to translate that integer into a date that is readable to an end user. Uh, we'll talk about those in a little bit. So why don't we begin first with setting the SAS date and then we will talk about how to manipulate the SAS date as well. So I'm gonna begin by setting SAS date. I'm gonna write a data step. I'm gonna call it class time. Uh, in this particular data set, I'm actually going to skip my set statement and I'm going to write a run statement directly. Uh, when you skip a set statement in a data set, this is an option where you actually don't feed a data set into a data step. Instead, the SAS program vector creates this new data set called class time, merely based on the information and the commands that you write between the data and the run statement, right? So there is no set statement. There is no data set we are feeding into this particular data step. Uh, let me go ahead and set um, SAS date to a certain value. So I'm going to create a variable called first and I'm going to set that to, I'm going to say January 1st, 1980. I'm just going to pick a date, right? The way I would do that if I wanted to is I would just write 01 JAN, so a three letter month variable followed by the year 1980. And I'm going to finish that up with the letter D and then the semicolon. Now the date itself has to be written within quotes as if it were a string variable but you are telling SAS this is not a string by adding that letter D at the end. D stands for date there. 
And what that is telling SAS is that I know I wrote these things within quotes, but please don't interpret this as a string. This is actually a date variable, right? So if I run this, you can see the log statement looks okay. The output data actually has one variable and one row because in my code, remember, I didn't have an input data set. The only thing in my code is I'm creating a new variable that I'm setting to January 1st, 1980. And you'll see there, there's one variable, one row, the variable is called first, and the date is 7305. Right? 7305 is basically the integer you would come up to if you start counting days from January 1st, 1960, all the way to January 1st, 1980. Right? That is 7305. But obviously, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see 7305. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. And I want to translate it into a front end format that's meaning. The way to do that is to use the format statement. To write the format statement, simply type format, and then the variable that you want to format, in which case this is first, and then the format that you want. There are several SAS date formats. The one that I use most often, I would recommend that you just pick your favorite and stick to it, but there are different ways to do it. The one I use most often is the date nine dot format. The date nine dot format basically converts whatever date you have into a nine, uh, nine digit format, if you will. So let me run this and I will show you guys what it looks like. That's what my data set looks like now. So it's the same thing, it's 7305. So even though right now you are seeing 01 January 1980, that's just the front end format displayed to the user. In the back end, SAS actually stores this variable as 7305, which was the integer we saw earlier. Now. Before we go forward, I want to show a couple, uh, an additional quick step. If you don't want to be opening the output data every single time, and sometimes you don't want to be when you're not feeding an actual data set and you just have one row and one column, a quick way to get around that is to use an option called proc print. Okay? Uh, what the proc print does is it basically prints your, um, prints your whole data set, which in this case is just one variable and one column. Uh, it prints the whole data set to my results tab right here. So if I run the whole thing, instead of having to look at a data set with one row and one column, I can just look at this um, result, print result, if you will, which shows that the variable is called first and the only value in there is 01 January 1980. Um, okay, so let me show, before, before we move on, I wanna show a few other things that you can do, especially using functions to set SAS date within a data set. Right? So we obviously saw how to set it a certain date. You just write down that date within quotes followed by the letter D. Uh, there are some other things you can do. For example, there is the today function. When you write the today function followed by empty parentheses with not even a space in between, just an opening parentheses and a closing parentheses, SAS automatically assigns today's date to that variable. The variable's name in this case is today. So it should assign today's date to this variable Let's go ahead and run this. In my results, you will see there are two variables now. The first variable, which is January 1st, 1980, and the today variable, which is 22,085. 22,085 is the SAS integer date assigned the, based on the calculation that January 1st, 1960 is date zero, right? But obviously, I don't want to be seeing 22,085. I want to be seeing something more meaningful, in which case I would just write down today right here. So I added my today variable to my format statement. What this does is the format statement followed by the list of variables that I want to format, which in this case is two variables first and today, followed by the format I'm interested in, which is date nine. Let's go ahead and run this, including my proc print so we can see this in the results tab. And there you go, today's date is 19 June 2020 and it is depicted in that date nine format. Now. There are a few other formats you can use. You don't have to use date nine. That's just what I prefer. You can use date 10, um, which looks like this. It basically expands the date a little more. If you don't like date nine or date 10, you can also use um, MMDDYY8. Uh, all formats in SAS are followed by that period at the end. So MMDDYY8 is basically two letter month, two letter date, and two letter year. Two character date, two character year. And that's what that looks like. 
it's separated by those slashes. So your date looks much more uh, like how you would usually write a date um, when you are uh, when you are writing dates generally. There are many other date formats. I'm not going to explore all of these for now. I'm just going to go back to date nine. You can explore these formats, or you can just Google different date formats in SAS, and you can see different ways to present that date. For now, I'm going to stick to this. Okay. Let me run this one more time. So remember, right now we have two variables in this data set we have created, right? The first variable is called first, the second variable is called today. Both of them have a date that is depicted using the date nine format. Let me now introduce you to a few more functions that can use a date as an input and give an output of something else, right? Uh, the first two things I've shown here, these first two lines of code are where the date is the output, but you can make date the input and get different things out of it. Um, for example, let's say you want to identify, identify whether a given date is a Sunday or a Monday or a Tuesday or whatever week day it is. Let's say you want to extract the date out of that date variable. Let's say you want to extract the month or the year. All of those things have a certain function, have a certain uh, command within SAS. So the function week day, let's say I'm going to create a new variable called WK day. I'm going to use the function week day. I'm going to apply it to the variable today. So it's going to take the variable today, the variable that was created here. Um, it's going to take the variable today and it's going to apply the function weekday on it to get the weekday out. Similarly, I can apply the function day today. I can also apply the function month. I can apply the function year. What each of those functions do is basically extract different things out of that date variable. Let me go ahead and run this so we can see what each one does. In this case, each of those things was stored in a separate variable. So you can see here, weekday is six. Uh, that's because today is Friday, which is the sixth day of the week. Uh, days of the week begin with uh, Sunday uh, as per SAS calculation. So one would be Sunday, and six would be a Friday, seven would be a Saturday. Uh, day is 19 because today is 19th of June. Month is six, which is June, and year is 2020. So each of these functions extracts a certain piece of information out of that date variable, right? And there are many more functions you can use with the date variable. For now, I wanted to introduce these functions to you, but I want to jump really quickly and also cover how to manipulate SAS date. So what does manipulating SAS date mean? So clearly we've seen how to set a SAS date and then we've seen how to input SAS date into certain functions in order to get different outputs. The next thing is being able to take advantage of the fact that SAS date is actually an integer in the background. When you have SAS stored as an integer in the background, that means that you can run all sorts of commands and all sorts of mathematical expressions on that on that variable, right? So let's go through some examples here. Um, I'm going to write a data statement. I'm going to call my new data set age. I will not write a set statement here. I'm going to do this just like we did the last one. I'm going to close out with a run statement. And actually, before I run anything else, I want to use a proc print, which basically prints out my data set. So I don't have to look at the output data. I can just look at my results tab. Okay, few things I want to do. First, I want to set a date of birth variable. I'm going to call it DOB. Uh, let's say my date of birth is, I'm going to make this up, 5th November 1978. Right? Uh, the date of birth of this individual that I'm interested in is 5th of November 1978. Uh, I can save this as a, now if I assign this, it actually assigns a numerical value, an integer to it. But I'm going to go ahead and format it just like we did earlier. Let me, let me fix the case there. Okay. okay. I'm going to quickly run this so that we can see what this looks like. There you see. So that's exactly what we wanted. Now, if I comment out 
the format statement, you will see that uh, it is actually stored as an integer in the background. 6883, right? So day 6883 in SAS language is the same as saying 5th of November 1978. Uh, I'm going to leave the format statement back on here. Okay. So now that we know that we've assigned this date and it's an integer in the background, there are all sorts of things we can do. Let's say you want to divide the date variable by two. There you go. You just treat it like you would treat any other numeric variable. Let's say you want to subtract number of days from this. So you can do DOB minus 1000 and it will subtract 1000 days from it. Um, so there you go. This was date 6333, something like that. Uh, this is this is half of that and this is 1000 subtracted from that date. So, so this date was actually 6883 in the SAS integer date number. DOB2 was half of that and DOB3 was basically that date minus 1000 days. So if you ever have a date, but you want to know what the date was 30 days before, just subtract 30 from that date variable, right? And that should give it to you. Now, these two variables that we have here, DOB2, DOB3 are depicted as integers, but really I can add them to my format statement and it will, it will treat them as dates at that point. Look at that. It treated them as dates and it is giving you a date for those numbers. Now DOB2, if you remember, was actually had, uh, had a decimal point, 0.5 on it. So SAS just rounds that number up to a whole integer before it translates it into a date. Uh, and the same for DOB3, which was, so I can now say that 1000 days before 5th November 1978 was 9th February 1976. I don't have the time to go calculate that now, but if you do the math, that's what it will come out with. Um, the real advantage of, um, of using SAS dates through mathematical expressions really is not to divide it by numbers, right? Because a given date divided by two as per SAS integers is not very meaningful. What you can do, however, is you can calculate somebody's age given their date of birth. So let's do that. Uh, let's say age of an individual. Um, let's say we want to know that age of this individual that was born on 5th November 1978 and we want to know their age today. All I have to do is I have to say today is 19th June 2020, which is, I've written the, I've put it in quotes and added a D, which means it's now a date. I'm going to subtract that from DOB. And it's, it's going to just, uh, it's going to simply subtract those two numbers and give me their age in days, right? So this person is 15,000 days old. Let's be honest, I, I don't know how many years is 15,000 days, right? And nobody tells you how old they are in days unless you are a seven week, seven day old baby, in which case you wouldn't be saying anything. Your mom would be saying you're seven days old. But that's neither here nor there. We want to make this the number of years. So I'm just going to divide this by 365.25 because we want to account for the leap years there. And if I run this bit of code, you find out that uh, 15,000 days is actually 41.6 years old, right? So that should basically give you a certain individual's age. Uh, if you had a second date variable here, instead of typing in the date itself, you can just enter that name, name of that variable. Uh, if you don't have it saved in a, in a variable, you can always use the today function to set it, or you can just write that date right there. And e any of those options are acceptable. Now, if you don't want to do this, there are certain other ways you can calculate age within SAS. Uh, the one that I am going to show you today is the YRDIF function. The YRDIF function basically says years diff, which means difference in years between the two dates that you feed into that function. And the two dates that I want to feed in are today's date, 19 June 2020, comma, DOB. Uh, I actually, so when doing why are why are DIF? You need to make sure that you list the earlier date up front and the later date second. If you flip the order, it will still calculate the difference in years, but it's going to give you a negative number, and we don't want that. So run this, and there you see. So age two it was the exact same thing as age one. We've got some rounding error there because we understand that uh, dividing by three sixty five point two five doesn't always give you the exact number. 
because there are some other differences in how many years you calculate. But uh, YRDIF will get you enough, close enough that either of those things will be acceptable. 41.6 years for this individual. Now, so this is a good way to get there. The problem with doing the YRDIF function or the subtraction between these two dates is nobody tells their years up to five decimal places, right? Like if you ask somebody how old they are, they'll say they are 41 years old. They are not going to tell you they are 41.6238 years old. So if you want to uh, clean that up a little bit, if you want to make that number look a little presentable, we can use something called the round function, okay? The round function in SAS takes in a given number with decimal places and it rounds it up to as many decimals as you want. And if you don't want too many decimals, you can always round it up to zero decimals or round it up to an integer. The way to do that is to just use round function around it. Uh, let me write this out as a new variable. H3 equals, I'm going to write the same YRDIF function, but I'm going to nest the YRDIF within my round function. So YRDIF, EOB, 19 June 2020. Then this is now going to be rounded up to the closest integer, which is, which is one. Now, if I wanted to round it up to something smaller, I could have said 0 0.01 or 0 0.0001, but I just want a whole number for an individual age. I don't want any decimal places whatsoever. So you can do that. And there you go. In this case, what SAS did was it basically took the number 41.6 and it rounded it up to 42. So now we know that the individual is 42 years of age. Um, this is an acceptable way to calculate age. There are other options you can be using, using something called the actual option when you do the YRDIF. Um, we, we, we don't have to do that for now. We, you can look, explore those on your own. The other things you can explore on your own, instead of using the round function, you can use something called the int function, INT which basically takes the integer out of that number you feed it. Um, this is particularly useful when if you don't want it to round up 41.6 to 42, if you just want it to give you 41, right? Because people don't tell you they're 42 days before their 42nd birthday. They, are, they still consider themselves 41 until that 42nd birthday happens. So if you want to do that, you can use something called the INT function. I'm not going to explore all of that for now, but uh, I'm going to let them let you explore that on your own. But this is how you manipulate SAS state. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh -huh. That concludes uh, all of the content for week two. Uh, I'm going to next go over the week two exercise and then we'll talk about the homeworks as well. Bye.